Hi folks, Kevin here. Well, it's March 2nd, 2018. We're having a bit of a snowstorm outside, and today I thought I'd put together some of the multiple uh, pictures and some video that I shot uh, in the past and most recently in the development of this Hulu Culture feature that we're showing today. So this Hugo Culture feature is the Hugo Culture Terrace, which you may have seen little little snippets of in, in videos over the years. Uh, I will try and create, I've tried to shoot some videos recently about some of the various Hugo Culture systems that we've been using, which I think are absolutely fantastic. Uh, and we've got them all over the property in different ways, both from pits to uh, woody beds to woody mounds that you see on contour, not on contour, and the reasons for each one being in the positions that they're, they're, they are placed in. So today's topic is the Hulu Culture Terrace. Uh, it's hard to get together all of the photos and get it in chronologic order, and this would be a couple of hour long video if I didn't really pare it down quite a bit. So we're going to start off, the video is going to start off looking at our most recent time back uh, just a few days ago when we had a big thaw. And uh, it wasn't ideal conditions, but we start off looking at the wood line and a whole bunch of trees that are going to be used in other hugo culture features. And so you get an idea of the woods that we take down. So twice a year, I take as much wood as you're seeing, quite a bit more than what you're going to see, a few hundred trees out each year from the woods. And they go into different hugo culture features. And so the video will start out like that. Then we'll transition to some slides, which I'll do some narration. And we're going to take you through from 2011, shortly after the Hugo Culture pits were capped off and no longer sinkholes in the ground. And then we're going to take that sloped land where you see where a canal system was initially started. That canal system is going to be excavated every single year to get an increase in depth, build up the roadway in between the dog run and the zone one gardens that, that are a little bit west of the canal. And the terrace is on the east side of the canal, so you get, you're oriented during this video. And we're going to go all the way up until just recently uh, when um, in February 28th, I think it was, that I shot the video a few days ago. It wasn't ideal conditions, but at least you could see where the, where the terrace is at now. It's not done yet. I've got one more year's worth of work to work on it. The re one of the reasons that I'd say that I'm taking my time with these features is I've been learning over time how much uh, consolidation there is when we're using woody materials and other carbonaceous materials. And I really want to not have to go back and redo this bed within the next 10 years after getting it installed. Because when you're putting it along a canal system, it's much more susceptible to loss into the canal. And the other thing that, that I really don't spend much time talking about in this particular video is all of those logs, there are spaces in between them, and it creates a, 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 an absolute abundance of, of homes, habitats, niche, niche, niches for the variety of species that, that are there. Everything from uh, fungi, which is certainly there, uh, we, we see a whole variety of different fungi species there, but there's insects, there's amphibians, there's reptiles, there's mammals all up in these areas. The muskrats love this, this whole area. They work this canal system all the time. This canal system is the canal system that's made for soil capturing. So this is the place where as this material breaks down and it works into the canal, we'll be re-harvesting that soil for garden beds in other places on the, on the site. So without any further ado, we'll start off the video and we'll take it from here and then I'll just close up at the end. Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's 20, uh, February 28th, 2018, and today I'm up along the side of, it, uh, of the property, uh, one of the areas that still needs a lot of work in the future. And this is one of the areas where you still have a lot of ash trees, uh, some spruces, some poplar as well, certainly some maples, but as you can see from 
me uh, panning around here, we've been losing quite a few trees. A lot of it has to do with the emerald ash boring, boring insect, which consumes some of the cambium layer, which kill, ends up killing uh, the, the trees ultimately. And then our windstorms either pull them out as the trees come down or topple them off. And uh, so all of this wood would gradually decompose in the woods here over time. However, I'm going to use them like I have all along for the last several years, going to incorporate them into hugel culture. And so I'm going to take you over to a couple of places where the hugel culture projects are, are going on. So what is a hugel culture bed? Uh, hugel culture, uh, I've made videos about this in the past and I'll put a link up there in the upper right hand corner, but Sepp Holzer is the one who really started making uh, the term hugel culture uh, popular, but it's, it's really just a soil covering wood. And it's a real good way of trying to at least temporarily sequester carbon, try to keep all of it from getting burnt like most, most places have done uh, when they're clearing land and all. And we bury all of the trees completely. Now, nowadays I no longer, I do trim the, the trunks right down so I can get them right tight to each other, nice and parallel for the most part. Or I put a layer of brush down, put a layer of logs on top of that, a thin layer of brush on top of that, and then wood chips on top of that. Because our soil type around here is almost entirely gravel, stones, and these came out of, came out of these areas that you in our gardens and all around here, and you've seen some of the rocks and the various features we have around the property. So they come from sand-sized particles all the way up to boulders, bigger than this one, these ones here. So we try to sort them out and use them in different, uh, different areas. We, we use them for a variety of habitat construction. But because we have so much gravel-like material, such stony material, that I usually don't use much stone or dirt to cover the hugel culture beds like most people do. Just because I'm going to be planting into it and I want to, I want to be able to stick my arm into the soil all the way down to the elbow. So what I do is that's compost on top of there. Yes, there's some rocks, a few sticks in, on top of it, but ultimately it'll either be wood chips or compost. Down layer, in between the layers of uh, logs as I'm laying them down, I will put small amounts of soil where there's ends of rocks, uh, ends of logs where there's a gap between them or a stump there. So I will fill in those voids to try and keep the soil from collapsing over time nearly as much. So here we are back in 2011. 2010 we put the hugel culture pits in. We're looking at that whole area all gravel in here. Here's where the canal will be going and here's looking up towards the east side of the property where all the trees are coming out of now. Here are some of the trees laying alongside of the canal system. I keep deepening the canal system uh, every year to accommodate the system and make it very gradient deeper towards the road access area. And all these logs are getting put in layers upon layers with soil being uh, used in between it. Some of the topsoil that was taken from the pond areas and excavation areas. And throughout this whole process, we're just gradually, year after year, building up layers after layers of logs. And uh, we have to dig out where the logs are going to be, and we take that soil and put it on top of the other logs, work it down in there, work the stones down in there. And so now we're about 2014 and heading towards 2015, and I recorded a little bit of video coming up here. Hi folks, Kevin here. I thought I'd make a quick video today. It's July 6, uh, 2015. Uh, again, we're located in central New York, Tunity. But I did want to show you what, what I got going on behind me. Uh, first, I'll say that I've been working with hugel culture or uh, earth-covered, uh, soil-covered uh, wood uh, for, for a few years now and uh, it works extremely well in this climate and um, I'm experimenting now with a uh, with a bed that I that I'm developing uh, starting a couple of years ago where uh, it's an edge terraced uh, hugel culture system in other words 
soil covering wood uh, from dead trees and, and brush and all that's along a canal system. So this is a small canal system. I'll just go over here and show. Uh, so here's a canal system. This is probably about 150 feet long. I'll have to measure it to know. And it's several inches deep. Uh, because of the large culture pits that are up all along up here uh, where you don't see the, the thick woods uh, that are probably 15 feet deep with similar logs in it from when I removed so many of the ash trees. Uh, that uh, retained so much water in the so subsoil surfaces that it gradually leaks, leaches out and because this is all gravel around this property and keeps this canal full besides pond one and pond two feeding this system as well. So, uh, and this has fish in it to keep the mosquitoes under control. And I just expanded this, uh, made a little bit wider, a little bit more uniform, and uh, we'll probably plant some rice in here next year to see how that goes, for, mainly for the wildlife and as a test. But what I've done is, uh, all along this area, uh, there's uh, trees and brush that I've extended going from the water's edge right up uh, about 15 feet up the bank and now I'm starting to put some of the topsoil that I scratched off the surface of uh, pond one when, when we put that pond in. Um, all along in here there's uh, good sized trees and well, you can see quite a ways up there that let me see. Not sure how well this is going to show up but there's logs laid in here in a couple of layers so it's uh quite thick down along the uh the edge of the uh waterway uh, with some large logs down in there and then uh brush and and trees put in all along in here yes i'm gonna say yes and today i'm going to be putting some more of the topsoil it's real bony soil here and on top of here and then uh I'll actually run my equipment over it for a bit to see if I can get a lot of this to settle in between the, the logs as well. Uh, I left a lot of the root balls on and what I did was dig down with the excavator to, to help secure these logs and because it's on a terraced area uh, it'll help to keep them from potentially sliding down into the canal system as the system ages. Uh, we'll see how well that works. The uh, wood that I originally uh, covered up partially up in this area, and you can see there's some growth growing up into it. Well, the moisture in the wood is, it, these logs are just completely soaked. Now, it's either from the uh, water coming down from the hugel culture pits or through the surface area coming down and saturate them or it's a wicking action coming from the uh, the canal system. I'm not sure which but it's worked quite well. Uh, when you pick up a short log it's it's much heavier than some of the the, the logs that have been uh, either standing or laying in the woods. So just wanted to take a shot of this and and uh, Hopefully I'll take a couple more shots after I get some more soil on it. I'm anticipating that this bed really won't be completely ready uh, for at least one more year, although I'm going to try and compact some of the uh, soil in to fill in between all of the, the spaces, the voids. And uh, someday I'll uh, make a video on all of the Hugel culture beds that I've made so far, what the pluses are and what the minuses are. Uh, a lot of the lessons that I've learned doing this, uh, but in general, in this part of the country, I haven't had to do any watering uh, the last couple of years in any of my hugel culture beds, except when I'm just starting some seeds or putting some bare root trees in uh, for the first two weeks. Uh, they do exceptionally well, where every place else, I've got to water. Okay, here we are again. Uh, this is the next year. I think this is 2016. We're going to go through a couple of slides uh, just to summarize. We've been building up more layers of logs using some of the topsoil and some compost, trying to minimize the amount of rocks, but we've been 
pushing a lot of material down in between all of the logs, trying to decrease the amount of soil consolidation after we get this bed built. Now we've incorporated some very large spruce logs along the front retaining area. There'll be large boulders being placed in the canal. The canal has been dug much deeper now. It's about three foot deep. The access road along the canal has also been deepened as well on your right side of this screen. And, uh, and this has created tremendous habitat on, in between all of those logs as well. A whole variety of insects, amphibians, reptiles all live in here. Uh, a, a, an interesting ecosystem. So now we'll be starting to add more compost, wood chips, and uh, uh, be u placing oculation tarps down as well to try and kill off some of the perennial weeds that we use to help uh, increase uh, soil penetration down in between the logs as well. We let them grow up and we use them as uh, insect uh, uh, attractants for the gardens, which are just across the small little access road there. So that's where we are. This is of 2018 now, uh, March 2nd of 2018. Well, I hope the video was informative and, and possibly gave you ideas about what to do. This feature, this element that we've established on our property, I think has been uh, much more beneficial than I ever thought it would be. It's a margin, it's an, it's an edge. The number of species that we've identified uh, coming into this environment from mammals, from muskrats working through the area, uh, to uh, insects, amphibians, all the nymph stages of, you know, of the various life cycles, even the newts that are into this area, the reptiles, the toads, the, uh, you know, all of the different different creatures that are here it's just been absolutely amazing and i think it's really benefited us in our uh, zone one kitchen gardens as well as our our food forests as well this is quite a large feature and and we think it'll keep on giving as time goes on because this being on the margin, uh, it's going to contribute to the soil uh, that, that's, that's going to be lost into that canal system. But again, it was designed so that we can recapture that, that soil over and over again. We've tweaked the design each year over the years, but hopefully you can see how it's worked. I eliminated all the video of me working with the excavator, doing the work in there, or me dragging the logs out of the woods. I didn't think that that was necessary for, for this video. But I, I was hoping that it would be to inspire some of you to think about what you can do. If you've got a, a decent sized slope coming down to your property that's potentially going to create problems with flooding out gardens or flooding your home or, or increasing water accumulation in your basement. And if you've got enough property that you can really work a feature like this into the system, it's amazing all of the pluses that we've gotten out of it. So... If this was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and please share this video with your friends. Uh, it might inspire them to think about incorporating something like this into the land that they're developing as well. Well, so thanks so much, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.